Hi, Patrick here, Half Cheetah Will View, and we're here with another, a, a new edition of Dollar Theater. Uh, Dollar Theater is an ongoing series that was started by our good friend Hobbs. Uh, I run that every Monday, but I sort of needed a new outlet. Uh, so I wanted to come up and do this series that's going to be strictly powered by voting, your vote. Uh, I'm going to put out five movies a week. You guys vote on them. Whoever wins gets to get voted, gets to get reviewed. Uh, and I have a lot of movies, so this this series will probably go on as long as I can go. Uh, I'm going to look forward to this. Uh, I, I really enjoyed doing the voting aspect of, of, of Dollar uh, of Dollar Theater. I did it for a while on the on the original series, but one of the things was that I put four movies, and then I would put Cheetah's Choice. And a lot of times, Cheetah, everybody wanted to see what Paladin was gonna was watching during the week, which is really cool. Uh, uh, so that's what we did. We just slid on over and, and now we do, uh, what pretty much what the cheetah picks out, uh, every Monday. But I wanted to go back and do, uh, voters, um, voting again, because that was a lot of fun too. And this time I learned my lesson. I may be slow learner, but I do learn. And that is that we're not going to do cheetah's choice on here. We're going to do only five movies that you guys vote on. And, um, I thought that'd be a fun idea. And so every, uh, th this series will drop every Friday, every Friday. And then I'm going to put five new mo movies and then, uh, the regular dollar theater will drop on Monday. Voters edition will drop on Friday. And so I was really curious. So, uh, you know, as far as putting up the first five movies. So this is what I did. I went to my community tab and I said, okay, let me just grab five movies from, from the infamous closet and, uh, let's see what happens. So I, I went ahead and I, I, this is the five movies I picked. And I'll tell you who I thought was going to win. Uh, first, I picked uh, The Skeleton Key, starring Kate Hudson. Uh, I picked Rio Bravo, which is a Western, which starred John Wayne and Dean Martin and Ricky Nelson. I picked Dunkirk with Tom Hardy, uh, directed by Christopher Nolan. I picked Journey to the Center of Earth, to the Center of the Earth, starring James Mason and Pat Boone, Arlene Dahl. And I picked Brainstorm with Natalie Wood, uh, 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 Louise Fletcher, and Christopher Walken. Now, quite honestly, I thought that who I thought was going to win was going to be uh, the Skeleton Key. I thought you guys were going to pick the Skeleton T Key to be the winner of, of this week. So I was very, very pleasantly surprised to find that none other than the Jules Verne story. Journey to the Center of the Earth from 1959 was your overwhelming pick for number one. Uh, we had 31 votes, uh, and Journey to the Center of the Earth had 45% of the vote, and Skeleton Key had 19. So twice as much as the uh, second place, uh, the runner-up. And I even asked, it, uh, I even followed it up with a poll on my channel saying, are, films, are older films like from the 30s up to the 80s, are they still worth reviewing? I mean, do people still pay attention to those reviews? Are they still worth doing? Are they just too old now? Do people just do not care? They care. They care a lot. Uh, the poll there was overwhelming. Again, 95% of the people said, and they commented as well, that, um, that, that older movies do count. And people still read the reviews of those films. And um, I'm pretty tickled by that, quite honestly, because I have a, I have a few older films, and I, and I put a few on, on, on my uh, Dollar Theater. You guys have may have noticed that. Um, a lot of 50s and 70s stuff just recently popped up. Um, and, you know, I, I enjoyed doing the old films. Those are films that were new. A lot of them were new when I was, when I was around. I'm calling old films, like someone says Aliens, an old film. Not to me, because I grew up there in that. I mean, I went and saw that. Um, that's not old for me. I'm, maybe I'm just, I'm, I'm old now, but the movie itself, I still remember seeing it for the first time. I went with my, uh, my, my mom's second husband. We sat there and watched it in the drive-in. Here's Alien, 1979, and next door to us, Phantasm was playing. So, yeah. And, uh, so, yep. Yeah. So, um... I decided to, to, you know, well, you guys decided for me to uh, hear me ramble on about Journey to the Center of the Earth from 1959. This stars uh, James Mason, uh, Pat Boone, Arlene Dahl, Peter Ronson, uh, uh, and Thayer David. 
Uh, uh, this is from Jules Verne, 1864 novel of the same name, Journey to the Center of the Earth. Uh, this was a fantastic film uh, right off the bat. Um, it is about uh, uh, Professor Lindbrook, who's played by James Mason. He is a dedicated scientist and, uh, in, in, in Edinburgh, Scotland, and he has a, a, a star pupil, uh, Alec McEwen, played by Pat Boone, who was a star back then. Pat Boone was a major star, major, major star. Um, uh, and, of course, and he has his lovely daughter, his lovely niece, uh, who Alec really cares about, and so we see them, and Alec, Alec actually finds, uh, he actually finds and buys this heavy-ass rock, and he brings it to the professor, they think it's a lava, it's lava stone, but when they drop it, when they try to, to, to uh, clean it off a little bit, it's, it blows up, and we find out that there's a man-made object embedded in the lava, and so they figure out that there had been a, 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 a they figured out there had been a, a expedition to the to the center of the earth. So the professor he decides he's going to send off all his findings to a fellow comrade uh, to see what he thinks. So he says, "Well, let me go send it to my good friend uh, 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 Professor Gottenberg." Um, and well, unfortunately, Professor Gottenberg takes this information and he he runs with it. He runs to Iceland with it. Uh, and, and, and once Professor Linderbrook finds out, he's pretty pissed off about that. So he grabs Alex, uh, uh, Alec and, uh, he heads over to Iceland, uh, because he's going to follow, he's going to follow, uh, the professor, uh, Professor Gutenberg and, and, uh, you know, reclaim his glory. Uh, well, unfortunately though, but the professor, well, he can't answer for his deeds because he has kicked the bucket. That's right. He paid for his evil deeds. Um. So as they're, as they're sitting there trying to figure out what to do, um, uh, the widow uh, of the Professor Gutenberg shows up to, you know, and finds out that her husband has been killed. Not only has been killed, but has been murdered. And so, um, and so uh, uh, Professor Lindbrook, he, he decides that he's going to make an offer to, to, to the widow to uh, buy her equipment. Uh, once all the equipment that her husband had bought and, and for his expedition, that basically was the Professor Lindenberg's, because he's playing rights on it. He says, well, he wouldn't have gotten where he gotten without my help. Well, the widow first refuses. Uh, 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 Car Carla, uh, Carla Gutenberg, she refuses. And so, um, but then when she finds out that indeed her husband had gotten over on Professor Lindenberg, she relents and says, you could have all this equipment, but underneath one, one condition. I go with you, um, and um, and of course James Mason's Lindenbrook is all haughty, He's very very British in this movie, by the way, very British, um, and tells her under no circumstances that uh, is that going to happen. Well, unfortunately, the 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 gentleman who they uh, assistant uh, uh, Hans, who they uh, uh, has hired to help them, he doesn't speak English. He only speaks Icelandic. And guess who else speaks Icelandic? But the widow Gutenberg. So, uh, so she is coming along on the expedition. So, um, what they don't know is the original, the original person who had put the man-made object into the lava flow was from the uh, Sarusinian family. It was the the original explorer. And his relatives have been have been uh, uh, have been laying in wait all this time trying to reclaim his glory. And so uh, uh, there is the Count and his assistant who are going to follow uh, 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 Professor Lindbrook, let him do all the hard work, and then when the time is right, pounce in and take all the glory. Uh, so the, 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 uh, the travelers, uh, they, they go into the center of the earth. Uh, they start the trail downward. There's various dangers that could happen on... Uh, the trails fall apart. Um, they get separated. There's creatures. Um, uh, 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 there's there's a whirlpool. There's all sorts of wild adventures in, in, in this movie for for our explorers. And one of the lighthearted moments also turns into a dark moment. And one of the lighthearted moments is that Hans has a pet duck named Grutud, and Grutud follows you know follows them. That's their pet. He sees the mascot. Well, as they go on down, down, uh, down into the, you know, down into the earth, 
they do run across the count of uh, 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 so, so uh can't pronounce that, and um, and he is he is the killer. He has he was he did kill uh, uh, Professor Gutenberg, um, and and while he is very arrogant, they find out that the party finds out that they need him as they've been down underneath the earth now for almost the entire year. Um, after another close call, though, um, well, they're a little bit hungry. And Gertrude is, um, Gertrude is a duck. So you can pretty much guess what happens there. Um, it's probably the only true one serious moment in the movie. It's pretty, it sucks. Um, and, um, but that's, you need, we needed that because that leads into the final act of the film, which you will need to see to find out what happens. Like I said, though, this is a fantastic film directed by Harry Levin, who was a tremendously gifted uh, director, had directed tons of hits. Um, the music was scored by Bernard Herrmann. That's right, Bernard Herrmann. You probably have heard me mention him before. Uh, he did a lot of, uh, he did a lot of scores, including uh, North by Northwest that we talked about on here. Uh, uh, so he also did that. This was supposed to be, uh, this movie was supposed to be, uh, sort of like a highlight for Pat Boone as they were going to feature him singing four or five songs. But once they watched it and saw how the songs pretty much interrupted with the flow of the movie, they, they removed it. He only got to sing one, he only got to sing one movie before they went exploring. Um, this movie was a big hit. It was made for $3 million. It grossed over $10 million, which is pretty huge. Um, there were a little bit of clashes on the set. Um, Arlene Dahl and James Mason sometimes butted heads. Uh, there's a key scene uh, where uh, they're in a whirlpool and um, and they're being water's being, being thrown on them and they're going around and around and it's, it, she got sick from it and she she was screaming and she James Mason's like you know just calm down you know it's not that serious. Well, it really turned out to be pretty serious because Arlene Dahl passed out. Uh, she was knocked unconscious for about 40 minutes. Uh, if the name Arlene Dahl means something to older fans, uh, yes, Arlene Dahl is, uh, was, a good, was a very good actress, actually, but she's probably more well-known for two other things. One, uh, 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 to tell the truth. Uh, she was in uh, To Tell the Truth and What's My Line. She did a lot of What's My Line and To Tell the Truth. And she's also the mother of Lorenzo Lamas. Uh, who, who played uh, Reno Reigns in Renegade. That's right. Now, there have been several instances of this movie being made over and over and over again. Um, a lot of people, come, you know, it seems like every other, uh, every 15 or so years, they come together and they make it. Even even the Asylum got into the act with a, with a version, a very loose version of Journey to the Center of the Earth. Um, there's also another show that I mentioned before, that is basically is based off the Jules Verne uh, novel as well, and that is the TV series The Lost World. This is based on Journey to the Center of the Earth, and um, so it's a very popular story. And um, I really enjoyed this one. Like I said before, it was nominated for three Oscars for the effects. The effects are pretty uh, pretty cool. Yeah, they're a little bit dated by today's standards, of course. But, uh, um, but tell you the truth, they were all practical. All practical. They shot on, on a, they shot some scenes on a stage, and they also went to the Carlsbad Cavern, which is very, very famous, and they shot a lot of scenes there as well. Um, so overall, I, I really enjoyed this film. Uh, I'm glad you guys picked it. You guys surprised the hell out of me, for sure, uh, picking uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth. I really didn't think... I didn't think it or Rio Bravo had much of a chance, but I wanted to throw it out there. And then, um, yeah, um, this is a lot of fun. So uh, I will be putting up the next poll here as soon as I get this uploaded. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and flash the next poll, and you guys can start voting all over again. And by all means, let me know in the comment section below what you think of this concept. I mean, do you like the idea of voting? Uh, I, which I hope you do, because I have a lot of, I like, I like, especially when you guys drop comments. Um, you know, like, well, that was a cool movie. That's a good one to pick. You know, I want to pick that one. That really, that's really fun. So just trying to get something going on the channel, something a little bit different. Uh, I know it's familiar, familiar, but you know, we'll see where it takes us. And like I said, I have, I have, I have a lot of, um, 
I have a lot of things to, to, talk, to talk about. We have a lot of movies to go. Um, and they, yes, and they are still all under a dollar twenty-five. We are keeping the dollar theater, um, but it's everything you see me you see here being voted on is a dollar twenty-five or less. So my budget baller status is secure. All right. Well, thank you for watching. If you're new to the channel, please consider consider giving us a sub. Drop a comment down below. Hit the notification bell uh, for, so, so you know when I do rambles long like this. And uh, we'll talk soon. Peace.